let me preface this with the facts. My family has been in the Ozarks of Missouri slash Arkansas since before the Civil War. It is a weird and wonderful place with a lot of, quote, characters, unquote, living in it. We're very rarely scared running through these woods, but it is probably due to the fact that we know the, quote, weird woods, unquote, and the oddballs who live in it. Our version of the missing 411 is some yahoo getting too drunk on green whiskey and passing out under a tree for a day after leaving the bootleg still set up in a cave. Yes, an elderly woman was arrested a couple years ago for running a moonshine operation. Meth changed a lot of the people here, but even if you run into somebody cooking it in the woods, wet weather creek beds and mountain dew are their favorites. Just greet them and continue on your way because they'll be gone in half a day. In the early 1980s, my brother, Steve, who was 16 years old at the time, went to northern Missouri, the flatland, with his best friend, Mike, to visit his relatives who were farmers. We grew up to be rather independent. Learning to drive a car by the age of 12 was the status quo among country kids. So, aside from being required to go to church, we were pretty much allowed to do what we wanted, and it sounds like it was no different for them there. They had a lot of fun goofing around and had great stories of what they did, but one story sticks out in my mind. Late one night, they were in my brother's old hot rod Mustang driving down the long, straight and narrow dirt roads of farm country. We live in the Rocky Hills. When the road became a very tight one lane with the fence lines so overgrown with trees that they were literally a canopy over the road. It can be odd to see overgrown roads in that area because fertile, flat land is a precious commodity. He said they were creeping along because they didn't want to run into a dead end with a fence and tear the car up. Headlights were definitely not the same back then as they are now. But something just seemed, quote, funky, unquote. Along the lane, they passed a drive with a chained up wire hog panel as a gate. In the moonlight, they could see an old two-story farmhouse that had collapsed in on itself with the traditional big barn beside it, looking like it was going to do the same thing at any time. There wasn't a pole light that most people keep around, only the moonlight. They continued on as the road seemed to get even more overgrown, talking about whether they should just attempt to back up the half mile to the farm's driveway and turn around. Finally, they could see ahead that the road opened up to some sort of a clearing, and as they pulled into it, the road suddenly ended at an old iron gate, with a makeshift sign reading, Coon Cemetery. They were at a graveyard. By this time, they had spooked themselves out. They were somewhat lost and had just creeped down some overgrown road to end up at a graveyard in the middle of the night. Steve managed to turn the car around and head back, going a little more quickly than before. As they started nearing the driveway to the rundown farm, they could just make out something very tall and glowing white in the driveway of the old place. As the headlights hit the drive and the apparition, they realized it was a ghostly white, giant old man around six feet, four inches tall, standing by the side of the road, wearing only pants and no shoes, just calmly waving at them. Still, nary a light, but the moon. They hightailed it out of there, and they both could have cared less if he scratched his car or not. He told us that over 30 years ago, and I have never forgotten it. <laughs> 